Now, I have identified from scripture two major causes of weariness. Please pay attention. There are two major causes that can make believers, any individual, to be wary. Number one, according to scripture, is hope deferred. Proverbs chapter 13, please, and verse 12. Give it to us, media. Let's hurry up. Hope deferred. The Bible says hope deferred makes the heart sick. But when the desire cometh, it is a tree that can minister life. So one of the reasons why people can be exhausted, one of the reasons why people can be... Um, discouraged and broken is prolonged expectation listen very carefully hope deferred can literally make the heart the word heart there is spirit the bible says a man's spirit can break not just a human body if your body is broken the doctor can treat it if your soul is broken a therapist can psychologically manage you but when your spirit is broken the bible says no man is able to bear it are we together now hope deferred results that you expect in your life do not come you expected that at age 30 you would have built a house you expected that by the time you have four children you should be financially free you expected that by the time you are 10 years in ministry you should be established and have membership when hope is deferred it can torture the heart are we blessed the number one reason why believers get worried let me tell you this we are beings of results let me use you and we desire advancement everybody say advancement this gentleman there is an instinct in him to continue to make progress that means that this year or this month next year or next month there should be progress by the time an individual is caused whether by life or whatever it is to either retrograde or stagnate it is dangerous the bible says it can do something to you that no man can bear are, are we together now yes there are people who you know reach me and send me text messages and say apostle i am tired and frustrated i've been in ministry you know when this brother was sharing his testimony i sat back there and i was just nodding my head because it is painful when you tell people the call of god is upon your life and there are no results to testify results are powerful results validate many things among them that you are operating by laws correctly among them that you are in the will of god so when results when your life is barren of results it can do something to your heart hallelujah praise the lord I once prayed with a family that were trusting God for a miracle for their child. They had a child, but the child had a condition that was a very serious thorn in the flesh for the family. Very young boy. I mean, he could go wild and even injure his siblings. Very blessed man, but that thing was just there. And I remember when I wanted to pray for them and I was encouraging them, um, I closed my eyes to pray and then I opened my eyes and I saw the man still looking at me. Now, you may laugh. It's not unbelief. It is what weariness can do to the spirit. How many of you have gone to several men of God for prayer? They've prayed and prophesied and said it is done. And then the next time, I see it here sometimes when I'm praying for people on the queue. Oh Lord, I pray that, and, and the person, you, you know, he's just looking at you and just saying, look, just finish this prayer and let me go. Lazarus had been there three days. And when Jesus came, he said, I know in the resurrection when everything is gone. You know, I've told you that I've been kept a few times in the mortuary alone to pray for dead bodies. And it's an experience that is quite interesting. Because you will stretch your faith and watch a dead body immovable, sometimes already embalmed, and you don't know what to do there. You end up thinking about your own life in that in that mortuary 
I mean, that's the most profitable thing you can do because the body is, if you tell someone stand up from a wheelchair, at least he can move his leg. It's just that the leg is not strong. But you speak to a dead body and you are even afraid of a dead body answering. <laughs> Are we together? If the dead body actually answers. <laughs> Remember the door is closed for security reason. <laughs> Blessed be God. Hope deferred. Financial expectations. Especially now in Africa and Nigeria. My God. The way this finance thing is doing people and the kinds of depression depression that someone can just stand by the road and just look at life and take a deep breath go home sit on a chair and die nothing exactly wrong just the reality of life hallelujah so we are beings of results and we are beings of progress and the moment your life listen cannot attain on to certain levels of progress within an appreciable period of time it is true that weariness can set in the first reason hope deferred prolonged expectations the second reason from scripture why weariness sets into the lives and the destinies of people is called sorrow write it down please sorrow sorrow are we together what is sorrow a feeling of deep distress a feeling of deep distress that is caused by losses caused by disappointments caused by misfortune a feeling of deep dis deep distress caused by loss could be loss of a loved one could be loss of a job could be disappointment you expected admission like some of you probably you expected the final year result to come out with you completely done and now you are seeing an extra year there sorrow and sorrow has symptoms let me list for you two or three of them number one is sadness you can interpret sorrow by the sadness that is in the heart of a man number two you can interpret sorrow or you can discern sorrow by depression human beings just become depressed they have no inspiration to aspire at life again nothing is ever worth their energy or strength sorrow rise up let's pray again it's no use rise up let's build a company again it's no use rise up as the one who is now left to take care of your siblings it's no use sadness depression downheartedness I have met very discouraged uninspired people in this life and I've been shocked and broken by their approach to life they can be on the road passing and a car is honing and it makes no difference to them whether they die or leave as far as they are concerned they are dead there are people like that an example of such a person was Mephibosheth in the Bible Mephibosheth had to come to terms with the reality of his being crippled and the fact that he would never have the opportunity to make any good out of his life again i hope you understand that in the days of mephibosheth there was no technology to draw inspiration from anybody that guy was left there so when king david sent for him hear his response oh king what do you have to do with a dog when a man calls himself a dog let me tell you one of the characteristics of sorrow is you begin to name yourselves what god did not call you life can push you down to a point where you start calling yourself what god has not called you i am good for nothing you can tell yourself 
I cannot amount to anything. I am the worst in my family, you hear people say. I am the black sheep. No inspiration to aspire for a life that is great. People admit defeat and sit back there and then before you know it, their lives fold because they do not sustain a superior revelation again. There are people who have packed up ministry and just said, you know what? This ministry thing, I quit. It's over. I've tried. There are people who have packed up businesses. After failing 10, 15 times, they just say, you know what? I've done my best. There are people who have given up on their children. I'm sorry. I can't pay your school fees. I can't take care of you. Do whatever you want to do with your life. Sorrow is a very serious thing. I've had the opportunity to comfort families that have lost loved ones and sometimes no matter what you are saying the mother or the father is just looking at you they want to believe what you are saying they hope one day they will believe it but for that moment they don't are we together yes I think the admission list just came out or so for I think ABU or I don't know which of the institutions and there were people who probably didn't get admission in the list that was released and some of them continued I, I read some of their text messages and honestly tears were almost coming to my eyes because some of them said apostle 11 years apostle seven years apostle this one this one sorrow is a reason why weariness can eat a man like a cancer and you become a shadow of yourself because you are sorrowful so hope deferred and sorrow are two biblical causes of the weariness in men no wonder our world today is filled with depressed men medical people will tell you the volumes of drugs that are consumed especially by men do you know why because the inability to be able to provide the inability to be able to be there sometimes can so discourage the man he stands and says well I know I'm good for nothing I know I'm not able to take care of my wife and family and because of that they draw conclusions and like Mephibosheth even when the king is calling they say don't call a dog call men I am a dog. Hallelujah. This is very powerful. You made me royalty, but I choose to serve. Serve you with my life. Serve you with my worship. You made me to see that your right hand, but I choose to bow, bow in worship, bow in worship. You made me royalty, but I choose to serve, to serve you with my life, to serve you in worship. You made me to sit at your right hand, but I choose to bow, to bow in worship, bow in worship. There are times that you're reducing yourself is to honor God, but there are times that reducing yourself is because life has made you so life has beaten you to a point where you do not see that you can stand again there are times when you are a king but you put your golden crown so that you will worship but there are times it is not worship it is just life that has hit you down there are times you go on your knees because you are worshiping God but there are times you go on your knees because you do not see any hope in life again are you getting what I'm saying now? Yes. You made me royalty, but I choose to serve. 
to serve you with my life, to serve you in worship. You made me to sit at your right hand, but I choose to bow. But I choose to bow, bow my heart. I will never forget many years ago when one of our precious ones in this ministry went to be with the Lord. She was a leader, served God with all her heart, loved God. She was so dear to me, I loved her with my whole heart. And she quickly just went to do something and returned back. And I remember I was counseling someone. When a call comes to me, and then my attention is needed. And then they break the news that this my most precious, precious daughter has transited to go to be with the Lord. I remember how I thought about it and I said, oh boy. I remember when God granted me the privilege to visit with the family and I held the mother and the mother began to sing and the mother began to encourage us and the mother began to rejoice. I said, stamina, that's what it's called. You know a man's level of spiritual dexterity, not when things are happening. But sometimes it's when nothing is happening. Do you have the staying power when the word of the Lord is yet to come through in your life? Do you have the staying power when the church has not opened up? Do you have the staying power when you are fasting and praying and the anointing does not seem to come upon your head? You watch all your colleagues and contemporaries already walking in certain dimensions, but for you, it is not there. You watch all your colleagues with jobs, some of them becoming managers, and here you are, after 15, 17 years, you are still looking for a job. Weariness, sorrow can set in.